Weten jullie wie dit is? Nee, nee. Eh, niemand. Nou, uh, <laughs> zeg maar even wie je bent en wat je hebt gedaan. Ik ben Judith Sargentini en ik onderzoek namens het Europese parlement de rechtsstaat in Hongarije. Dank je wel. Miss Sargentini, you say Viktor Orban poses a systemic threat to the European Union. Why do you think that? We've seen the European Commission and the member states doing nothing since 2010, while rights of Hungarian citizens were deteriorating. So we had to act. And as a rapporteur, it was me who led the investigations and actually wrote the report. The uh, Fidesz political party, of which Viktor Orban is the leader, has been in power early 2000s. Then they lost the elections to Social Democrats. Uh, but they worked hard and gained back power in 2010. So it was his second term as prime minister, but there was time in between. Now he came back to power not necessarily because he was that popular, but because the, all the opposition was both divided and tainted by massive corruption scandals as well as an economic crisis. Now, once he was in power, he changed the political system and particularly the electoral system in such a way that with a plurality of the votes, he would get a supermajority of the seats. With almost all of the votes counted, Hungary has said yes to four more years for Prime Minister Viktor Orban. His Fidesz party polled around 45%, giving them a projected 133 of the parlament's 199 seats. In the 80s, Fidesz was a democratic group, democratic party, fighting for democracy, for freedom, for independence, uh, also for uh, all important for the democracy rules, which means that democracy doesn't mean only uh, uh, free elections. Democracy means uh, the vivid society, the, the participation of civic organizations, participation of trade unions, partici participation of, uh, of citizens in decision-making processes. We need to remember that in liberal democracy, the government elected by majority also should take care on minorities. This is the key issue for the real democracy. Newspapers have been closed down, TV stations change tone and are only speaking to what the government wants them to say. The Central European University is forced out of the country and moves to Vienna. And there is large-scale corruption with European funding, European taxpayers' money, which is enriching Viktor Orban and his entourage. Along the way, um, the democratic process is being eroded and, and so um, elections are no longer really free and fair. Uh, the government parties have a massive uh, advantage over the others and now even the oversight of elections is being pretty much controlled by Fidesz, which means that today um, it probably is no longer even a, a, an illiberal democracy, we should call it a competitive authoritarian regime. What he is doing is taking away basic rights of his own citizens. This is not about migration or asylum, but what he does is not treating every Hungarian equal for the law. A Hungarian citizen is, is a, a European, European citizen, and if we do not protect their rights, what will happen if my rights are infringed or the rights of another citizen, group of citizens in another European member state? This report never attacked the citizens. We are not talking of a report which is going against the Hungarian citizens. In the opposite, this report wants to help the Hungarian citizens. Fidesz the ruling party in Hungary, Viktor Orban's party, is a member of the EPP, the European People's Party, the Christian Democratic family in Europe. Other members are CDA in the Netherlands, CDU and CSU in Germany. And these are all democratic parties and also pro-European. It's a real problem because in many in many areas, and uh, when we are voting uh, some issues, some solutions, uh, 
it's a big difference between our voting and voting of Fidesz, members of Fidesz in our political group EPP. And also EPP voted for this resolution. It was clear, so it, uh, it, it means that uh, also Manfred Weber voted for this resolution, so voted for starting the procedures related to Article 7. The EU has in word criticized Orban, but almost never in deed which means that not only do they allow Orban to undermine liberal democracy, but they actually subsidize him. And this is first and foremost um, because of the European People's Party, of which Orban is a member. Um, but the rest of the European Union hasn't been particularly forceful either. The European Commission could have sanctioned them at various moments and never really tried. You understand that it is so important that the Hungarian citizens, they are not instrumentalized by their prime minister and to create this national, national feeling, this parliament is going against us. This parliament is not going against the Hungarian citizens. This parliament tries to protect fundamental rights. If you are going to come forward with a quite harsh report saying things are really going wrong in Hungary, you better go to Hungary, talk to everybody and also show that you've done your homework. I went to meet the State Secretary for Parliamentary Affairs in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, because that's what the Hungarian government had offered me. After an hour, I was ushered out of the room onto the street from a different door that I came from. They had seven or eight camera crews lined up waiting for me, nobody told me that, asking the question, Miss Sargentini, why do you hate Hungary so much? I am getting myself educated, so I'm trying to learn as much as possible today. And if I've learned that, I will answer all questions. But not today, it's just too early, I'm making up my mind. Thank Can you. Can you tell us what did you learn? While I was in that struggle, other camera crews were inside the Ministry of Foreign Affairs where the State Secretary gave a big press conference telling how naive I was, how stupid the questions had been that I asked, how I clearly have no clue about Hungary and the history of Hungary. And I was on the evening news on all channels, of course, because most of the channels broadcast what the government wants you to broadcast. Az Európai Parlament bevándorláspárti többsége el akar hallgattatni minket, mert kerítéssel védjük hazánkat és Európát. Ne engedjünk a zsarolásnak, védjük meg Magyarországot. Készült Magyarország kormánya megbízásából. Ik pik dit niet langer. Ik, ik snap dat Hongarije geen Nederland is en ik weet dat veel Hongaren dol zijn op Orbán, maar ik snap ook dat Europa niet accepteert dat een halve dictator binnen de EU een rechtsstaat opblaast. Article 7 is an article in the Lisbon Treaty that can be used when the situation in a member state deteriorates so much that action is needed and it can lead to taking away the voting rights of that member state in the European decision making. The problem are the member states and the member states, they protect each other and somehow the situation of the fundamental rights has been very much politicized and somehow for a certain period the political families they protected their national governments instead of protecting fundamental rights. Honestly, I thought, fat chance that I get the two-third majority. We can come close, I thought. But all those that abstained in May 2017 had to move from abstention to voting in favor, which is quite something. And that's why I needed time. I needed to convince them from, from abstention to in favor, which would then show publicly where they stand. A two-third majority is difficult to reach, particularly when you're addressing a member of the European People's Party. Because the majority of the Prime Ministers is from the EPP and the majority in the Commission as well, they were protecting Fidesz and Viktor Orban, their family member, and they let him get away with all these breaches of the rule of law and democracy. I was 
was nervous at the beginning already because I thought I need to also shake hands. What do I do? You need to, it's the start of a debate and you need to at least look each other in the eye and have the politeness to, to say, have a good debate. I never got that chance because he waltzed in late and I thought uh, I will not let him get away with without a normal handshake. It would suggest enemies, whereas this is not the issue. This is a member of parliament critiquing a government. It's nothing personal. Da ora subito la parola all'onorevole Sargentini che è il relatore. Okay, thank you chair. I didn't see this coming. I thought we had company. But as my report is targeted to the council in all, I'll just get started. What is the state of our union? What shape are we in? Chair I think I should stop now and start again, because I don't think this is a good start of the debate. <laughs> Colleagues, the time has come to make an important choice. Will you let it happen that a government that violates the values upon which this union was built without consequences? Or will you ensure that the values of this union are more than just words written on a piece of paper. Colleagues, I count on your support. Thank you. Ráadásul ezt a jelentést olyanok írták, akik alapvető tényekkel sincsenek tisztában. A jelentés bevallja, elmulasztottak hivatalos delegációt küldeni Magyarországra, vagyis önök megfelelő tényfeltárás nélkül fognak dönteni. Viktor Orbán spoke straight after me and he used it to provide a message to his citizens back home and I think that particularly colleagues in the European People's Party expected him to tone it down and not to actually come with some sort of a, uh, a positive sign. He just went Full speed ahead. He helped me win the vote. Goedenavond. Nooit eerder stemde het Europees Parlement in met een strafprocedure tegen een lidstaat. Maar omdat de Hongaarse regering van premier Orbán volgens het parlement de democratie uitholt, gebeurt dat nu wel. Of Hongarije uiteindelijk helemaal buitenspel wordt gezet binnen de EU is nog maar de vraag. Maar het felle debat in het Europees Parlement geeft aan hoe groot de spanning is binnen de EU. Passiamo ora alla relazione Sargentini. Anche qui sarò più lento, dato che si tratta di una votazione delicata sulla situazione in Ungheria. Posso chiudere il voto? Il voto è chiuso. For the EPP group it's important to uh, make now a serious assessment that is done by the Commission, so we have a legal process on the table. And uh, hopefully Victor Orban is uh, quickly contributing to this process that we can get in touch to each other, discuss the open questions, and then he has to respect what Europe is telling him. This vote in the European Parliament showed that it's not all power play, that it is about democracy, about ethics and values, and that we're there to protect European citizens, even against their own government if needed. It also shows that it really matters who is there to represent you in that parliament. <laughs>